of sports. Rich Paul wanted it in January. He gets it in June. The Pelicans have agreed to trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers for Alonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three first-round picks. The NBA draft is this Thursday on ESPN. That includes the number four overall pick, which the Lakers got on lottery night. That is the deal. Is Anthony Davis, long expected to be a member of the Lakers, now is. Playing on the Kings court, Wingmans, we've seen it with Wade and Bosch and Kyrie, the most points per game by a King James teammate. It's a pretty good list. Anthony Davis has outproduced all of them if you take a look at his scoring content in 2018, 2019. And he and LeBron are now forming the new nucleus of the Lakers. And who knows who is to come TBA July 1. Nobody has more access to the league superstars than Rachel Nichols. You saw that throughout the NBA Finals. Something that LeBron, though Davis, has yet to participate in. Rachel, the deal is now basically done. The ink will be dry once we can get to July 1 and the new league year and all of that. Your initial impression on the Lakers adding Davis to pair with LeBron. Well, this feels like a really good deal for both sides. I think the earliest it can be completed is July 6th, so that there's some wiggle room after that about when they complete the deal, and it'll just kind of depend on when that becomes advantageous, again, for both sides, to kind of where they will end up having cap room at what time of the year. But it's done in terms of an agreement, and it's a great haul for the Pelicans and David Griffin, and this is what he was hired for. Basically, his pitch to get this job is, I can get you a team where you are not going to be decimated from trading your superstar away. This is an incredibly promising young core they have. Of course, the luck of getting Zion Williamson is huge for them, and they will be able to build upon that and really be sort of a budding young force in the Western Conference. But, of course, the bigger fish is going on out in L.A. LeBron James needed another big player to maximize his final years. It's sort of this last third stretch of his career. And it didn't look like they were going to get one of the top, top-level guys in free agency. And so this was really the move for the Lakers. And frankly, because LeBron James is a diminishing asset, because he is a human being who ages, and we saw this year, you get more likely to get hurt as you get older. You can play a little bit less tenacious defense as you get older. None of this is a knock on LeBron. He is just, in fact, human. Um, the longer they waited to acquire a huge superstar to play alongside him, the less they would get out of him. So the fact that he almost basically wasted his first year with them, now he's got a year where he's going to be turning 35, but having Anthony Davis should juice up that remaining years on LeBron's contract with the Lakers. And Los Angeles is one of the places that Anthony Davis has said, I would like to sign a long-term deal with. So it's not in the bank. He is going to come here and not be obligated to the Lakers for more than that one year. Um, he can't sign an extension with the Lakers for the first six months against league rules. And his agent, Rich Paul, has said he doesn't intend to sign anything until the following summer. So they'll see how it works. But the reason the Lakers gave up so much is they have – at least reasonable assurances from Anthony Davis and his side of the fence that he will sign a long-term deal here. And it not only, as I said, maximizes those final years of LeBron's contract with them, it maximizes and sustains the Lakers because he is young and he is going to be able to be their core as LeBron ages out if he continues to stay here and likes it in Los Angeles. The Lakers are coming off a 37-45 and season, the wasted first year of LeBron, as you called it. I know you do your show, The Jump, essentially across the street from the Staples Center, where the Lakers play. The Lakers obviously were humiliated all this year, inside, outside, the organization, the drama, the incompetence. This one move today, Rachel, takes the Lakers from where they were to? Uh, look, we'll have to see. I mean, if this year's NBA Finals taught us anything, it's the trying to predict 9, 10, 11 months <laughs> in advance what's going to happen is foolish. And it's not that fun, right? Pretending we all know how this is going to work out, I don't get it. I don't know why everyone's in such a rush to do it. The thing I love about sports is that we don't know what's going to happen, that the underdog can win, that circumstances are going to change and then change again, and it's going to be a wild ride. So that is the one thing I will predict, that I expect it to be a bit of a wild ride. There's going to be an adjustment period with Anthony Davis. Uh, there's going to be an adjustment period with the, with the young core that is now going over to the Pelicans. There could be injuries that change the whole game. I do know that the West is a whole lot more open than it's been for the last four or five years 
because of we know for sure Kevin Durant is, is not going to play in the NBA next year. So he won't be playing for the Golden State Warriors, even if he's fine to them, because of that Achilles injury. And Clay Thompson is going to need a six or seven month recovery period. Now, him I expect to be back by next spring and going into the playoffs, and we'll have to see sort of what kind of player he is. Uh, I think that Clay Thompson is, is made of vibranium, so I think he'll be <laughs> fine by the playoffs next year. But it is, will be a definitely diminished team than what we've seen for the last four or five years. And that opens the door up in the West. I wouldn't count the Golden State Warriors out, right? I mean, they still have Steph Curry. Sure. Um, but, but it's definitely a much more open scene. We still have to see where the Kawhi Leonard domino is going to fall, too, before we can predict what does this mean for the Lakers? Because Kawhi Leonard comes to the Clippers. As we've seen, you just need Kawhi and a bunch of other good guys. You don't need some other big superstar to win an NBA title. That's now been proven as recently as this week. It's fascinating, Rachel. I know you're going to be on top of it from the jump from this moment on. we got about two weeks to go until free agency. The draft is this Zubin, I would just I'm yeah. going to interrupt you just for one quick thing. Sure. I, would, I would say to you and to everyone who is listening right now, I heard you guys in the intro say, hey, Rich Paul got, got his what he was asking for. I just want to keep reminding everyone, Anthony Davis is a grown-up, and, and this is what he wanted. I have talked to him a bunch over this last year. He wanted to be in Los Angeles, and that is part of why he hired Rich Paul, not the other way around. So Good. Anthony is the one who has a house here. He's got a young kid that he would like to raise in California, and we should just give him that agency because this was his decision. Fair enough. He's a 27-year-old man who made that decision. Great piece, by the way. Cover story, Rich Paul in Sports Illustrated if you want to know more. If you want to know more, The Jump is the place to be every weekday afternoon. Rach, it's going to be a wild ride. Thanks for being with us. And even after the Woj bomb we just heard of, Guess what? Anthony Davis now relates to the Lakers. That puts them the favorites to win the 2020 NBA title, according to Caesar Sportsbook. Keep in mind, the Lakers have missed out on the postseason in each of the last six seasons, the longest such streak in franchise history. So, yeah, the Lakers now get a second star to go with LeBron. I mean, something's got to give with the scoring, huh? No doubt. And for the Pelicans, not to be undone, Zion, Holiday, Ball, Ingram, Hart, and three other studs to come. Speaking of studs, the best of college baseball, the College World Series, is up next. Day one turns to night one in Omaha. Wearing a different uniform, according to our insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, the Pelicans have agreed to a deal to trade Davis to the Lakers for Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three first-round picks, including the number four overall in the 2019 draft. Now, here's the thing. Davis had a player efficiency rating of 30.3 in 2018-19. That is the third highest in the NBA behind two MVP candidates, and Giannis Antetokounmpo and James Harden. His career PER of 27.4 is third best in NBA history among those to play at least 300 games, trailing only Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Uh, PER, PER is a rating of a player's per minute productivity. And now we got to bring in Zubin, the one and only ESPN's Dave McMenamin, who follows the Lakers and LeBron all the way every day. Dave, your reaction to Anthony Davis heading to Los Angeles to be with LeBron and you guys? <laughs> it, I can't say it's shock. It's certainly a lot to give up, but you know you're getting a lot back. And the entire NBA was reminded of the difference a top-level talent can make with Toronto being bold and going out and getting Kawhi Leonard and getting the first championship in franchise history. Here you have the Lakers certainly gave up a lot to get Anthony Davis's services, but you bring back a 27-year-old superstar in his prime, who has already shown some chemistry with LeBron James and the limited opportunities they've played together. And now we see what the next shoe to drop will be and how they fill out the rest of this roster to try to have the necessary depth to make a legitimate run at a championship. And Dave, that's where I wanted to go with you next. Rich Paul couldn't get it done in January, but he makes it happen in June. And there had been so much emphasis. Woj was with this earlier and said this had to get done before the NBA draft so they could get those trio of first-round picks in addition to Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, and Josh Hart. So you've got LeBron's salary. You've got Anthony Davis' salary as he eventually heads to free agency in 2020 and likely re-sign with the Lakers. Just take into account the salary that they now have to take into account with LeBron and Davis. What can they do? What can they still afford to do come July 1? Well, as presently constructed, Zubin, they don't have a full max salary slot available. Now, that doesn't mean that a 
player who's considered a max level talent wouldn't take a haircut in order to join the likes of AD and LeBron. But you could see the Lakers break up the max slot that they've been preserving and go after several different pieces to really have the necessary depth they're going to need next year. And, you know, some of the names you could hear and you likely will hear in the coming weeks, guys like Seth Curry, Brooke Lopez, Bogdan Bogdanovich, um, right on down the list. Uh, Terrence Ross of the Orlando Magic, they are going to need to not just have a two-man team. I mean, what you saw out of the Golden State Warriors, what a fantastic collection of talent, but if one of your top-tier guys goes down, you're really at a disadvantage. And so, you know, you could just see LeBron and Anthony Davis as the major stars on that team. Obviously, Kyle Kuzma retaining him will allow them to have a young up-and-coming scorer with that roster. And then, you know, guys like Mo Wagner and Alice Caruso likely given a chance to be a part of this team as well. But they're going to need to fill out, you know, rotation guys four through seven. And perhaps that means breaking up the max contract or the near max so they much have more to remaining break. open on their book. Yeah, definitely so much more to break down here coming up with this move. The Lakers acquiring Anthony Davis, a lot of expectations in Los Angeles. Dave McManaman with the insight. Zubin, we're going to switch gears right here because you know what's funny, Zubin? You think that the NBA season is over when the Toronto Raptors, you know, they crown themselves champions? Oh! No, it is now. We got breaking news into Sports Center. We do. I think the NBA offseason has become more interesting than the NBA regular season, and this is the biggest one of all. The Pelicans have agreed to finally trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers. Now, here's the compensation package. Everybody's wondering, mm -hmm. what would they give up? Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. Remember, Ingram has the blood clots in his arm, yep. so that's an issue. Josh Hart and three first-round picks including the number four overall pick in the 2019 draft, which will air this Thursday on ESPN. That league sources tell ESPN. We've got the NBA's best insider with us. He's going to help break this down for us. It's Adrian Wojnarowski. He joins us tonight here on SportsCenter. Woj, I just gave the details of the deal. This is Tony Collins and Zubin Mahenti. What else can you add? Uh, Zubin, Tony, this is a monster haul for the New Orleans Pelicans to get Two starters, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, an outstanding young player, and Josh Hart, and three first-round picks, including the number four overall pick in Thursday's draft, which allows New Orleans not only to draft Zion Williamson at one, but at number four, uh, get another you know, potential very good young player. But for the Lakers, they paid a steep price to get the player they had to get, Anthony Davis, now Davis, and LeBron James, partner up in the West. Suddenly, the Lakers are a legitimate contender. They were able to keep Kyle Kuzma. Uh, and, you know, this is everything L.A. had to do this summer. They had to get Anthony Davis. They weren't at the top of any big free agents list. But this certainly changes the dynamic of that Laker organization, changes the narrative. Uh, they've got Anthony Davis, who has said all along he plans to sign a long-term extension with the Lakers next summer when he can become a free agent. This is very interesting. Tony and I have so many questions for you, and obviously we're going to continue to hit you with them here until 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's become the biggest story, obviously, in the sports world right now. David Griffin is now the executive vice president of the New Orleans Pelicans, had a good relationship with LeBron from his days when he ran the Cleveland Cavaliers. Do you sense in any way the insistence that Dell Demps, the fire Dell Demps, wouldn't make this move with the Lakers, but the relationship that Griffin might have with the Lakers, Rich Paul, LeBron, in any way, did that allow this deal to get done more quickly? Uh, absolutely not, Zubin. I think David Griffin was trying to make the best deal he could for the Pelicans. I think his focus on was maximizing the assets that they get in return, and L.A. was the place that they could maximize it because Davis had made it clear that's where he would resign. Uh, there were other teams interested, but the Lakers went to such lengths. There has not been a deal for a single player in this league uh, as steep of a price as L.A.'s paid, perhaps since Carmelo Anthony, the Carmelo Anthony deal that Masai Jerry made with the Knicks in Denver uh, a decade ago. Uh, there hasn't been a, a team that has had to give up more for a pick. So uh, while Anthony Davis does go from New Orleans to L.A., 
you know, they paid a price, and they're going to be certainly limited roster-wise with those draft picks. Um, they lose, uh, you know, the core, uh, you know, that, you know, very good young core there, but this is a deal L.A. had to make, they make and, and they paid a steep price for it. Well, you keep mentioning how much of a monster deal this has been, and this is. When did this all pick up steam? They've been talking, Tony, over the last several days. I think talks picked up um, as we headed into the weekend, Thursday, Friday. New Orleans had wanted to get this deal done by the weekend, ahead of Thursday's NBA draft. Now they've got that fourth overall pick. They've got to decide um, who they want to select with it. Um, and, and remember, too, this deal cannot be uh, finalized until July 1, but they will be picking on Thursday with that number four pick. And now the Lakers, have, or excuse me, the Pelicans have some time between now and then to um, identify who they would like to take there. But also, you know, they could be in the marketplace to shop that pick. There are other teams who might want to move up. So this gives the Pelicans a lot of options here between now and the draft. Woj, I wanted to ask you about one person conspicuously not in this deal, and this was a guy maybe only second to Anthony Davis in this deal that was talked about more than anybody else as the Pelicans and the Lakers tried to make something happen, and that is Kyle Kuzma. Again, it's Ball, Ingram, Hart, and a trio of first-round picks. Kyle Kuzma not being included in this deal tells you what from the Lakers' vantage point? Well, they had to give up in other areas, giving up the three firsts, giving up Josh Hart as part of the deal, who's an outstanding rotation player for uh, the, the, the Lakers. And, um, you know, Kyle Kuzma is, is a very good young player, uh, but without him in this deal, it is still substantial to New Orleans. And uh, certainly Kuzma now will partner with James and Davis. Uh, he'll be a key part of that Laker team. But uh, it gives a lot of flexibility um, financially in New Orleans. They um, you know, they're going to be able to, they have cap space this summer. They can go out and add to this core. They believe Zion Williamson is going to be everything that people think he's going to be a legitimate franchise player. And the, the, the reshaping of that New Orleans franchise just sped up by number one, the fact that they won the lottery, but two, how much they got in this deal. But for the Lakers, they wanted to hold on to Kyle Kuzma. That was important to them. They did. And certainly he's a player that can help them win now. Uh, but they gave up plenty else. Woj, thank you very much. I know you're constantly working the phones, looking for more details on this. We'll continue to follow it here on SportsCenter. It's the biggest story in the NBA. Anthony Davis has finally been traded.